What's your advice for guys who are still doing cold approach? We're going to pass it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, keep doing it. I mean, I do more cold approach pickup to this day than almost anyone other than probably Owen. I mean, the cold approach, uh, I built my soul circle through cold approach. I mean, I did, I mean, this is kind of a, probably a funny situation, but I have a, so I have a takeover uh, program. So I'm in London. So I, I will, it's 30 days. I will go to somebody's city. Uh, not everybody. It's, it's, um, you know, it's for a very specific type of person, but then I will do a social circle takeover. So I'll build someone's social circle from the ground up myself. Um, it's probably the main program that I did before I was with the RSD. It's the main program that I've done. Um, you know, it's about half of my business is doing these takeovers and I did 96 approaches yesterday, uh, just myself. Um, in the street, in the members clubs, uh, Soho House, Annabelle's, um, just whatever. Because so what happens is we create a, a demographic of the type of female and male my client wants to meet. Then I go out and actually do the work for it, right? So uh, I think sometimes people get confused when they think, so I, okay, there's a lot of social circle coaches that do social circle because they're afraid to cold approach. So it's like, oh, social circle now somehow became this way of not having to cold approach. And some of the social circle guys... Um, most of which learned through my social blueprint program, but pretty much everyone, whether they're a coach or just a proponent of social circle, even clients of mine, I've seen kind of ha fall into this tendency that I've had to shake them out of is that it's this yin and yang, this two sides of the coin It's cold approach or social circle, which is not at all, uh, why I started it. I mean, I created social circle literally to cold approach within a better environment in London and you have Annabelle's, you have the Mark, you have, um, you know, you have several, uh, Hartford, you have several of these membership clubs. You have to have a social circle even. You, you, if you're just doing cold approach in Washington Square Park in New York and Leicester Square, you're just doing bad cold approach. So what you want to do is build a social circle to cold approach and meet new people. All cold approach means is that you met somebody that you didn't know before. I think people make too big a deal um, out of this. You know, another thing people will say is that social circle is this like very delayed process. For people who know me, people who have followed my stuff know that I'm, I mean, I, I mean, especially it's, it was kind of a, a running theme within RSD that I was probably one of the most sexual guys. I was the most kind of, uh, you could say aggressive, I guess is a word. I was the most crazy. I mean, there was definitely, people kind of knew me as, you know, crazy RSD Luke in some ways because I was so aggressive. I mean, we would have orgies in Cabo with, you know, 15 girls kind of thing. Like it was, you know, a lot of the things that... Um, you know, some of the biggest social media guys that, that you, I mean, you could just name five, six of the biggest social media guys that are known for having girls. They, they learned either directly or indirectly from what I was doing back then. Um, so I think a lot of people don't realize that social circle is actually just a meta frame for how you live your life. But I cold approach, I open direct, I do lots of cold approaches. Uh, it's, it's almost like an investment portfolio. You need to have these different lanes inside of it. Um, what I like about social circle is that it just, there is no failed cold approach. Every cold approach where I want to, I, I want to hook up with her. I want to date her. She doesn't with me. It's not a failure. She's now a friend, right? She's now a part of my group. Maybe I have a male friend that she wants to meet. Maybe I know somebody who has a job that she wants. Maybe, I mean, it's just this connect. It's this ultimate connector is the ultimate value that you can have. I genuinely have, I don't feel like I've ever failed a cold approach in the past 10 years because she fit into my life in some way. You can get every girl that you see's phone number, Instagram, and connect her with something, whether it's connecting her with you, whether it's connecting her with somebody else in your life. It's really just about packing the snowball bigger and bigger and bigger. So as a man, you should always be cold approaching. You have a wife and kids, you should still be cold approaching. It just might change what the goal is. Maybe it's not to hook up with this girl, but you're at a cigar lounge and you see, I mean, the other day I was with uh, Miles Teller and um, Anna Darmus two of the most famous actors in the world. I, I met them about five hours after landing here because of cold approach at a cigar lounge, right? Well, I'm not, I don't exactly have a reason for that, but I have some clients who are in movies, production. So I introduced them to each other and it was a whole thing. Miles Teller is one of the most famous actors in the world right now. And it was through cold approach that I met him, but it was through social circle that I kept the interaction going. Yeah, I really like that. Um, th there were so many people that kind of, Say, I don't do night game, I don't do day game, I don't do social circle game, I'm loyal to this per, uh, particular modality. Modality, that's a good word to use. This particular thing that nobody even knows where the phrase day game came from in the first place. I asked Ross Jeffries about this, like, do you do day game? And he said, like, what is day game? It's just like a um, during a day, during the night, but 
it, it should really be about the locations you're going to more than anything else. Um, but well, yeah, this... especially. So I've I've actually gamed back in the day with Paul with Ross often, right? Like I mean, I mean, I remember a time where him, myself, and Neil Strauss actually were hanging out in Malibu. Uh, very very funny story. It ended up being like a thirty six hour day. It was it was it was a very funny, fun, weird. I mean, I came. I mean, I I love the book, the game. I'm not somebody who's like. Yes, pickup and PUA has gotten very weird, but I still have nostalgia for for those days. I mean, it still was very impactful for a lot of guys. The day game versus night game thing, I'm exactly the same way right now when I talk to you versus if I talk to girls versus if I talk to them at night, the day, a strip club, a brunch, a membership club. I, I, there's not this like day game hat that you then wear <laughs> where then all of a sudden now it's this different kind of guy. If, and if anyone says that, they're either lying or they don't know what they're doing. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I tend to actually call this like just be social because you're taking yourself wherever you happen to be. Like if you go to the grocery store, um, just like you were saying, go to a hotel lobby, go anywhere. Um, you should just be it's not like you have to summon this state or anything like that. It should be that you're social all the time, pretty much. It's you like might a, it's have like a Yu-Gi-Oh character or like a Pokemon. You gotta like, <laughs> yeah, you gotta like yeah. spawn it up out of your penis or something. But um, it, it's almost it's not something you should think is like a constant. But there are moments when you're like, I I don't know, I want to be alone. I'm not sure if that's your case, but um, uh, it's okay to isolate yourself every once in a while. And I don't mean like move to a fucking island, but if you have like a few hours of being anti-social or something it doesn't fucking matter it's still relevant that the fact that you're carrying around your socialness well yeah so i mean t okay so when you say anti-social you can be alone and not be anti-social right what a lot of well, a lot of guys who've seen my videos and who who know me with uh, through through online purposes or through through online um you know social media i think people would be surprised to know i'm actually super introverted i'm not an extroverted person at all uh, I know how to be charismatic. I know how to, I have no approach anxiety because I know how to kill approach anxiety and teach someone to not have approach anxiety. But I, I spend most of my day with an AirPod in my ear, one, to save battery life, listening to podcasts. Listen, I go through a book every other day on Audible. Um, my, most of my days are spent uh, either with you know one client in my group coaching program on Zoom or at the gym, or on meetings, or audiobooks, right? So I'm, I mean, I'm alone most of the time, but that three to four hour window, um, usually between like six and 10, eight and midnight, it looks like I'm very extroverted. I just have a skill set and a, a toolkit, essentially, a Batman belt on how to be extroverted. It's not fake, it's just, it's kind of like at your work versus with your girlfriend versus with your girlfriend's parents. Well, in your case is, you know, more than girlfriend, right? You know what I mean? It, you're, you, it's this, you have to show, it's not a chameleon. You're not a fake person. It's a different person that you show in these different situations, right? So I think a lot of guys think, oh, I either, like, especially with my stuff, because I have a lot of status and I, I do a lot of status oriented things. I think a lot of guys think, oh, you got to be a, a multimillionaire to do all of that. Or they think, oh, you got to be very loud and boisterous like, like Luke, like me in order to do that. They don't realize... I, I actually so the different the definition of introverted versus extrovertism is where you draw your energy from. So it's like, do you get energy for being around a lot of people? Um, you know, I have daughters. My oldest daughter is actually extremely extroverted. She needs to kind of like she, she wants to go to a playground. She's young. She wants to go to a playground where there's other kids, even if it's a shitty playground. She wants to if there's no kids there, she doesn't like it. She's extroverted. Um, my second daughter, she could care less. She just wants to go to the, the playground that has the stuff she wants, right? So that's the difference between introverted and extroverted. They can both interact with other kids, but one draws and feeds off that energy. It's like a, an office. Do you like the water cooler talk or do you like working remote at home, right? But both, let's say you're a guy who's working remote at home or you're a guy who's working at the office, or whichever way you prefer, you should still have the ability to attract any female you want to attract because that's not really even that hard. You should still have the ability to create a little social circle networking thing to get a investment for your app or to, to do whatever you need to do. So you really need the cold approach. You need a, a, an ability to do uh, extroverted things. And you also need to build a, a little social circle. It's just, it's like a music equalizer. Whichever one you lean into is based on your own goals, right? Um, what speed are you up to on Audible? You go like double speed or what? Um, so I can't stand double speed, triple speed. I think those people don't actually um, retain anything. 
Uh, I'm literally one X. I'm not trying to be this like speed whore. I just have an AirPod in my ear at all times. I think the speed whores with Audible, I think they're trying to like signal something that's uh, as if they're, there's like an award with how fast you get through the book. Um, in fact, I prefer one X speed and read the book. So a book that I like, I read and I listen to it. Um, you're doing three X or you're doing two X. How much are you actually remembering? It's just even at one X, if you're just kind of going about your day, I feel like you missed some things. So if you can do two X, cool. I'm impressed. I guess you get a, you get an award. Um, but I, I actually like, um, my thing with audiobooks is I have to like the, um, I actually have to like the narration. I, I have to like the speaker. Um, it can be pretty brutal sometimes to listen to a book that you don't like it, but yeah. well, that's pretty judgmental. But, uh, have you read the book, the setup by Dan Bilzerian? Yeah, actually, um, yeah, I mean, the name, the setup came from a series of projects that him and I did directly. I mean, he I basically gave him the name for that book about six years ago. Um, yeah, we were doing a whole, we were doing a whole app. We shot a bunch of videos. Um, I introduced him into essentially the, the, the kind of the pickup world back then. Um, you know, we did a lot of events together six, seven, eight years ago. Um, yeah, I have a video in Social Circle Blueprint, actually, where in that video, you see me recommending the name, the setup for a project. Um, in SCB2, we have a whole interview together. Um, he came to Vegas immersion. Um, he kind of saw what we were doing. He was very excited by it. I have a bunch of videos of him and I in social, social circle blueprint too. Um, yeah, the, th the thing about Dan, I mean, Dan obviously has crushed life in so many ways. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of that stuff, it's like, he almost, it's not really modernized at this point. Most guys don't really want to have, you know, a CPG brand like an ignite and then have 15 paid girls to be in the thing. And that's not me hating on it. What he's done is awesome. It's just like, you know, it's like the 17 year old boy in all of us wishes we were Dan Bilzerian. You know, the 30 year old man in all of us doesn't really want that at all, right? It's a different kind of thing. Most of my clients definitely don't want that kind of lifestyle. Um, but there was three, four years of my life where, I mean, Dan taught me how to wakeboard. He taught me how to wake surf in Vegas in Lake Mead. Um, then I moved Dan to a client named Vegas Dave. Uh, we absolutely crushed um, Cabo for like two years. We were doing every single weekend in Cabo. And that was even more of a Dan Bilzerian lifestyle, if you ask me. Um, both great guys, but you just have to, you have to find the, the mentor, the coach, the friends that actually embody what you want. Right. Yeah. Nice. 